Hello and welcome to Swift Goose. Today we're going to look at async await in URL session by converting our previous URL session project to use async in Xcode 13. As a quick reminder, all this app does is fetch the current price and percent change of Bitcoin using the blockchain API. And I'll put a link to it in the description below. So in the previous tutorial, we used app.quicktype.io to generate a URL extension and crypto model that we can use for our blockchain API calls. So we've got our model, our JSON decoder and encoder, and our URL session extension. And then we also created our API class. Since then, all I've done is gone to our storyboard here and just added an icon to make it look a little bit nicer. So now we're going to convert all this to async await in Swift 5.5. This is on macOS 12.0 and Xcode 13 beta 1. So first thing we got to do is go to our target up here. And we have to change our deployment target to 12.0 because async await is available in 12.0. OK, now that that's done, let's go to our API. And now let's create a static method that's going to be async called get BTC async. And we can mark it async by putting the async keyword. And we also need to put throws. And this is going to return a crypto model. Now right away we get a missing return and that's fine. We'll deal with that. But the other thing we have to be aware of is that this method now throws. So we're going to have to create a error class that can handle some of the errors that might occur during our API call. So let's create that class now. Swift file, and we'll call this API error. OK, and here we'll make an enum and make this API error and be of type error. And we'll put three different cases because three different possibilities could happen. We could have a bad URL when we're making the request. We could have an invalid server response where, where it doesn't return 200. Or we could just have an invalid data returned from the server that doesn't match our model. So let's make case invalid URL. Oops. Case invalid server response and case invalid data. And now, since we want to return custom messages, we can make this custom string convertible too. So let's do extension API error, custom string convertible, and add our description here, switch self. And we have our three different cases. So case invalid URL, we'll just return bad URL, case invalid server response, The server did not return 200. And then case invalid data return the server returned bad data. OK, now let's go back to our API class. And we have our async method. We can come down here and grab this guard statement for our URL because it's going to be the same thing. The only difference being is we're not returning anymore. We are going to throw an API error dot invalid URL. So if our URL is wrong or broken, we're going to throw invalid URL error. And that will get us out of this whole method. Now we can make a tuple of the data and response returned by the API into a constant. So let's say let data response equals try await URL session dot shared dot data. And you want the one that's marked data from delegate and async throws. So let's press that one. And for our URL, we're just going to use URL. And we can actually just delete this piece here. So URL session is going to asynchronously try to go get a data and response from that API. 
and basically this line is going to wait for that response before it continues. Now that we've got our data in response, we can check what's in our response. So we'll say guard let response equals response as, and we're gonna set this as an HTTP URL response. And we also wanna make sure that our status code is good as well. So response.statusCode equals 200. So if neither of those are true, then we are going to throw a different error. So this will be an API error dot invalid server response. So if we don't get back the correct HTTP response or the status code is not equal to 200, throw the error. And now finally we can work with our data. So guard let crypto equals, and basically we're just gonna to try to parse this JSON out using JSON decoder to our crypto model that we have in our crypto file. So try JSON decoder dot decode. And we're gonna use here our crypto dot self from data else. So if we cannot decode our JSON data from the server into our, our crypto model, then we're gonna throw an error. So that will be throw API error dot invalid data. And finally, after all these guard checks have been completed, we know that we have our data parsed into our model, so we can return our crypto variable here. And that's it. This is all we need right here to do an async call. We don't need any of the other pieces. So this whole method, though this method looks shorter, it deals with completion handlers and it winds up being longer because we have our crypto file here that use the URL session extension and so on and so forth. But now we're ready to actually asynchronously check our Bitcoin price. So inside of our check price button click, we are going to make an async block and then we're gonna call blockchain API dot and we're gonna call our BTC async method that we just created. It says right here that it's used in a context that does not support concurrency, but if we press enter here, that error is just gonna go away. So we get another error instead. Obviously you can call throw, and when we didn't use try, and then also it's marked async, but there's no await. So what we're gonna do is say, let BTC equals try and then await, and that error should go away. Now the rest of the method is gonna be the same. So we can copy all of this and paste. Now let's comment out our sync code. And let's run our code and make sure that it's working. Okay, so let's check our price. There it goes. And let's check it a few more times and see if it changes, though it probably won't much. Oh, it did on the first time, okay. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks for watching.